welcome back. Uh, in this uh, lecture, we will be reviewing the energy analysis of closed system. So, as I already discussed, uh, the, for the closed system, you have uh, only interaction with the surrounding is uh, through a through energy okay that means energy can uh, exchange with the surrounding and that would be uh, either through uh, work or uh, heat of work so uh, so let me first uh, describe uh, the work here so uh, the work uh, can be of uh, different types so the one classical definition is uh, defined as a force acting through a displacement Okay, where the displacement is in the direction of the force and thus we typically write the work in this form. Okay. Now, for such a system, of course, physically the system may not displace as such, okay. but if this piston is, is movable, that means our boundary is movable, then it can displace the volume of the gas containing it. Okay. But in another form, there could be other kind of work such as electrical work, okay, which also will uh, supply certain work to the system. So, a generic uh, definition is that work is done by a system if the sole effect on the surrounding could be the raising of a weight. We can take an example of a battery motor uh, which is used to run a fan okay, and uh, the effect of uh, work by the system on the surrounding okay, that is if we consider this as a part of it then this can be understood by the same definition by replacing the fan by a pulley weight system. So, while the shaft rotates, its effect is basically to raise this weight okay, through this pulley. So, this is a generic uh, definition of the work. Now, as I said, the work could be of different type. One is uh, the boundary work, if the boundary work is, uh, uh, is if the boundary is movable. Okay. Now, how do we define for such a system, uh, let us say the boundary work here. Now, uh, a general definition of mechanical work in this case uh, using the piston uh, cylinder uh, device is uh, simply by F, uh, F external multiplied by the displacement DL, where F external is nothing but the force to compress the gas or the force felt by the surrounding as the gas expands. Okay. And you can write F external in terms of P external multiplied by dV V where V is the volume which gets displaced. For the quasi uh, static equilibrium, the P external, okay, here the P external and P internal uh, are nearly equal, but one is infinitesimally large to accomplish a net change in the volume. Okay, for a very slow process, you can write the differential work as simply P dV. Okay. And thus, you can integrate this in order to get the in order to get the work. You can integrate the P dV, and if you know the relation between P and V, you can easily get the work out of it. Now, as I said, the boundary work is the simplest case. Here, the piston can be moved, and thus, uh, upon applying uh, certain uh, heat, okay, or certain changes in the state conditions, the boundary can move, and thus can um, undergo certain work. So, for example, for a differential change in the volume or the piston location by ds, the differential amount of the work can be written as d, uh, del uh, wb is equal to f into ds and f as I said it could be um, simply the pressure multiplied by the cross sectional area and this can be written as p dv. Okay. So, the integral form of this would be Wb is equal to integral from state 1 to state 2 and Pdv. If it is a quasi equilibrium process, one can draw a process dia path out of it and thus you can simply integrate for such a system if you know the path. That is you know the relation between P and V. Now, Wb for the sign uh, based on the sign convention is positive for expansion okay, and negative for compression. Okay, that means, if the work is done by the system on surrounding is positive, otherwise it is negative. Okay, so, let me just uh, use this uh, concept to do a quick uh, example and some of you have already done this thing, it is just a recap 
uh, in order to speed up all, uh, the understanding for a more complicated uh, subject uh, or concepts in the later part of this course. So, this kind of example certainly is going to help us uh, later on. Okay, so, uh, this is a simple question. The question is a piston cylinder device uh, which has a air containing in this volume point 4 meter cube at uh, 100 kilo Pascal and 80 degrees Celsius. Okay. And it is uh, compressed to 0 0.1 meter cube in such a way that the temperature is constant. Okay. Now, we need to find out the work done during the process. So, what we are going to assume is that this is a quasi equilibrium process. Further, we are going to assume that the air is at air is basically an idle gas. Well, because of for a simple reason, temperature is very high compared to its uh, critical point. In other words, the process can be drawn on a PV diagram by this green curve from 1 to 2 such that uh, T is equal to constant or in other words, PV is equal to constant. Okay because PV is equal to uh, nRT can be written directly like this or uh, we can write P is equal to C some constant okay, divided by V where C is nothing but nRT. Okay. So, I can now write the, the boundary work simply as this. This would be your C ln v 2 by v 1 and c is nothing but p 1 v 1 ok ln v 2 by v 1 ok. So, uh, this is a very simple example from here we can get this boundary work ok. So, let us move on in many processes uh, the actual expansion and compression of the gases are related uh, in, in a commonly uh, relation uh, which is uh, called polytropic process where p and v are often represented by this expression okay p v to the power c to the power n is constant so this is a, your polytropic process okay uh, so where n can vary okay so from 1 to uh, of where n is a variable for n is equal to 1 of course it's a constant uh, temperature for particularly idle gas so, we can also find uh, boundary work for such a system which is a polytropic process. So, again uh, for a polytropic process we can draw a diagram, we can draw the path on a PV diagram. So, again we can write this boundary work in this form. Okay. Now, the P is given as uh, some constant C minus N dV and you can rewrite this expression or you integrate it you should be able to get the following. Okay, where this is 1 to 2 and minus n plus 1. Okay. This can be also written in this form a very simpler form P 2 V 2 because C V 2 minus n is nothing but P 2, P 2 multiplies by the remaining term V 2 is will be this minus P 1 V 1 and 1 minus n. Okay. So, this is the case for a generic expression for a boundary work for a polytropic process. Now, if you have an idle gas, you can replace P 2 V 2 by N R T okay, and thus you can get N R number of moles on the gas constant T 2 minus T 1 1 minus N. Of course, N is not equal to 1 in this case. You can also consider specific cases. For example, if N is equal to 1 okay, and P V is equal to C for an idle gas, W B is going to be P V ln V 2 by V 1 which we have derived earlier also. For a constant pressure W B is going to be simply P 0 which is a constant V 2 minus V 1. Okay. What about constant volume it is going to be uh, simply 0 because the boundary is not changing at all. Okay. So, W B is going to be 0 for constant volume. Okay, so, uh, having uh, done this exercise for the boundary work, so let us now uh, uh, summarize the energy uh, balance for the closed system. Okay, so, uh, as we have already discussed, a generic energy balance is E in minus E out okay, 
equal to delta E in, E system, where E in minus E out is a net energy transfer by heat, work and mass. Of course, for closed system there is no mass contribution, only heat and work is going to be there, whereas uh, for a delta E system you will have to include changes in the internal energy, kinetic energy, potential energy. Okay. For the rate expression you include dot here which means basically is the rate of energy change with respect to time and that is also included here. Okay. If a sign convention is used, the energy balance can be written as Q net in minus W net out equal to delta E system or in a simpler form Q minus W, okay, where by definition Q is energy supplied to the system and W is the work done by the system. Now, for a cyclic process, okay, delta E must be 0 and in the word W net out is equal to Q net in or Q is equal to W, okay, where Q net in is nothing but Q in minus Q out and W net out is nothing but W out minus W in. Okay. Now, this you can also derive using a generic expression here based on this uh, without considering the sign convention. So, let me just now uh, do a quick exercise on a general energy balance for a constant pressure expansion and compression process. Okay. So, we are going to consider is Q is supplied to the system and W is uh, uh, done uh, from the system. So, in this case uh, what would be the expression for constant pressure expansion process? Uh, what would be the? So, let me start with E in minus E out delta E system. Okay. Right now, this is of course for net uh, energy uh, transfer because of the fact that this is a closed system. So, this will be net energy transfer by Q and W. So, Q minus W is equal to delta U plus delta K E plus delta P E, and we are going to consider this to be 0. Okay. Now, this W could be W boundary and some other work. Okay. So, in that case we can write Q minus W other okay. and W B for a constant pressure is P 0 V 2 minus V 1 and that is going to be delta U. Okay. So, we can take this or we can first write here is U 2 minus U 1 we can take this to this side and what remains is W other U 2 plus P 2 V 2 minus U 1 plus P 0 V 1 and this is nothing but by definition enthalpy. So, this will be S 2 and this will be H 1. So, for the case of a constant pressure expansion compression process, for a closed system, the energy balance is going to be simply H2 minus H1. Okay. Having derived this, uh, now we can apply it to our example. So, this is our example of a piston cylinder device which contains uh, 25 gram of saturated water vapor that is maintained at a constant pressure and a resistance heater within the cylinder is turned on and it passes a current of 0.2 ampere for 5 minutes from a 120 volt source at the same time a heat of a heat loss of 3.7 kilojoules occurs and we need to find the final temperature of the system. Okay. So, we can apply that constant pressure expression. So, uh, what we have? We have uh, again E in minus E out is delta E system. So, ignoring the kinetic energy changes and the potential energy changes, this will be delta U and if we just consider the sign which is given here, uh, which is known from the statement, we can write uh, W E in electric energy due to resistance heater minus Q out minus whatever the boundary work which is done. Okay. So, uh, if you take out the boundary work to the other side, we know this is going to be delta H or in other word M S 2 minus H 1 okay. and we can write W in, in 
minus q out okay now uh, what is w e in okay this is nothing but your i v delta t or so small t which is uh, 5 minutes you have to convert it that into seconds uh, this is going to be 7.2 kilojoules w uh, q out is 3.7 kilojoules and uh, m is given to you is 0 0.025 kg we always prefer to use si unit to remember that and then we need to find out uh, from here s2 what is h1 h1 is uh, is a saturated vapor 300 kilo pascal so this is going to be h of g at 300 kilo pascal we look at a table for, of a saturated water table okay uh, particularly the pressure table so from here the value comes out to be 2724.9 kilojoules per kg we plug in here and obtain the value of s2 s2 is 2864.9 kilojoules per kg okay now what we have as a state 2 p2 is 300 kilo pascal and s2 is 286 4.9 kilojoules per kg okay so now uh, since uh, s2 is greater than hg so it's a superheated table so you look at the superheated table and you can find out t corresponding to which term which is very close to the 200 degrees celsius okay so superheated table 0.3 megapascal you look at the value you will find this s2 will lie very close to the t you can do the interpolation or because since the value is almost close i'm just approximating it to 200 degrees celsius so this is the example of making use of constant pressure energy balance okay so we can extend this exercise for other cases such as un, uh, restrained expansion okay so we can uh, extend this uh, understanding by applying uh, the concept of energy balance for the closed system for a case of unrestrained expansion so uh, here what we have is a rigid tank which is divided into two equal parts okay and initially one side of the tank contains uh, water having 5 kg pressure at 200 kilopascal and temperature is 25 degrees celsius another side is the vacuum evacuated space the partition is removed water expands in the entire tank and the water is allowed to exchange heat uh, with the surrounding until the temperature in the tank returns to 25 degrees celsius okay what we need to find is the volume of the tank the final pressure and the heat transfer for this process so we are going to consider the system a complete tank okay so in that case of course the tank volume is for, is fixed so the the boundary work is going to be zero Okay. So, uh, let me just first uh, find a couple of things we need to uh, start with a very simple idea that what is the volume of this particular container uh, that is uh, we can start with the uh, first part. So, if you look at uh, the condition is 200 kilo Pascal 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, by definition this uh, water is in a compressed uh, liquid. Okay and uh, thus we can approximate the specific volume of this uh, water as vf the specific volume of the fluid at 25 degrees celsius which is 0 0.001 meter cube per kg okay in other word okay so v1 the volume of this half volume uh, or the volume occupied initially by the water is going to be the mass multiplied by the specific volume which uh, since this is 5 kg and you plug in this value it turns out to be 0 0.01 meter cube okay so now uh, what we need to find out is the uh, fi final volume so final volume is uh, v2 which is two times of course which two times uh, v1 okay so the what is the final uh, specific volume is going to be v 2 divided by m so it turns out to be 0 0.01 divided by 5.002 meter cube by kg okay so this uh, 
So, uh, the sp final uh, specific volume of uh, state 2 is 0 0.02 uh, meter cube per kg. So, at uh, 25 degree Celsius, we can write down V f and V g and this is needed in order to find out the quality of quality of water in state 2. So, this is your 0 0.001003 straight from the steam table and this is 43.340 meter cube per kg. Okay. So, this you can see that you these are the values which we are using here. Okay. Now, from here we can find out quality because quality is V 2 minus V f divided by V g minus V f. So, this is nothing but V f g. So, from here we get 2.3 into 10 to the power minus 5. Now, we write down the expression. Remember that also that P sat is uh, for this P sat is uh, P 2 is P sat at 25 degrees Celsius, which is 3.1698 kilo Pascal. So, we write down the expression of energy balance delta E system and this can be written as m u 2 minus u 1 and q in is uh, simply q in there is no w b there is no other thing. So, it is q in is equal to delta u which is m u 2 minus u 1. So, what would be your uh, so we need to find out this two terms. So, what is uh, u 1 u 1 can be approximated as u f at 25 degree Celsius okay, which is 104.5 eight three kilo joules per kg okay and thus your u2 is your uf and uh, yeah so uh, for to to calculate u2 we know already x so we can use uf and ufg so again we can go back here you we know uh, uf and uh, ufg we directly make use of that and x we know we, we get 104.88 kilo joules per kg. We plug in this value two values here in this equation in order to get q in. Okay. So, q in is this. So, q in comes out to be 0 0.25 kg 0 0.25 kilo joules. Okay. So, it is a straightforward exercise. In other words, what is happening is uh, this in this process at uh, 200 uh, kilo Pascal and 25 degree Celsius. This was the specific volume and uh, this was in a compressed uh, liquid region and in this expansion process uh, the pressure drops uh, and it gets into the saturated region which is uh, 2. Okay. So, this is how you make use of this uh, simple energy balances in order to solve certain problems. Okay. So, this is a recap. I hope that uh, and believe that uh, some of you must have gone through this kind of exercises in your earlier course of thermodynamics, but we are trying to just recap some of the concepts. So, let me just uh, move on and uh, talk about specific uh, heat here. Uh, specific heat basically define in order to express different capacity of the different materials to, uh, to store uh, heat or to store energy. So, if you compare let us say two materials such as iron and water, it takes different amount of energy to raise uh, same amount of uh, temperature. Okay. It takes uh, less amount of energy for iron to change its temperature from 20 to 30 degree Celsius for a 1 kg uh, block of iron. And if you look at the water, it takes much significantly much uh, larger amount of uh, energy almost close to uh, 10 times more. So, how do you define or compare this uh, kind of ability to 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 hold such a uh, energy, and we define in terms of uh, a variable called uh, specific heat. Okay, and the specific heat is defined as the energy required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by one degree. Okay, and thus its unit is uh, five. Uh, its unit is kilojoules kg degree Celsius or kilojoules kg Kelvin. Okay. Now, you can uh, calculate specific heat uh, either uh, maintaining the volume constant or you may can maintain the uh, pressure constant. If it is uh, done in a way where uh, the 
volume is constant is called the uh, specific heat at constant volume, which is the energy required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a system of a substance by 1 degree as the volume is maintained constant. And the specific heat at constant pressure is the energy required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by 1 degree as the pressure is uh, maintained constant. Okay. So, in other words, you can represent a, a Cv in terms of the partial derivative of U with respect to T at constant volume and Cp at partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature uh, pressure constant. Okay. Now, note that uh, Cp is always greater than Cv because this is so in order to accommodate more energy needed to expand uh, needed for expansion. Okay. Now, let me just talk about these uh, variables in terms of uh, for, for particularly for idle gas. Uh, for idle gas, uh, Joule has already shown that uh, the internal energy is going to be independent of pressure. It only depends on the temperature okay, for by sim simple exp uh, experiment. Now, uh, by definition, uh, enthalpy uh, is U plus PV and uh, since U is the only dependent on temperature for an idle gas and PV can be written as RT. So, by definition, uh, H is equal to U plus PV and since U is independent of uh, temperature and PV you can write it for idle gas RT. So, as uh, Joule has uh, shown that uh, for in the idle gas U is exact differentiation. So, uh, CV now can be written as simply DU by DT and simply, similarly you can do the same thing for CP. In other words, you can write DU as simply CV T which is dependent on temperature multiplied by DT and simply DH is equal to Cp dt. Okay. So, one can find out now the changes in the internal energy by just integrating this expression. Similarly, that for enthalpy, for enthalpy we will be considering Cp, for internal energy we will be considering Cv. Now, what we need is basically now the relation of Cv as a function of uh, temperature. So, that uh, relation or that expression would be needed. Okay. Now, if you look at uh, real gases, uh, real gases at low temp, uh, real gases at very low pressures and very high temperature uh, behaves like uh, idle gas. Okay. Or particularly when you consider very low pressure, all at low pressure all real gases approaches idle gas and only depends on the temperature. Okay. And particularly for uh, null gases, uh, they are only dependent on uh, or they are almost constant. On the other hand, the molecular fluids they are linearly dependent on temperature at very low pressures. So, one can use these uh, curves, get a, uh, fit it into some kind of polynomial expression and obtain Cp uh, as a function of temperature. Okay. And this is what often use Cp, uh, one can put it into expressions and this can be used in order to get delta H. Okay. And for an idle gas, of course, uh, we know that expression of Cp minus Cv is equal to R, we can also get from there. Uh, the expression for delta u. Okay. Now, uh, integrations though are straightforward, uh, but it is rather time consuming and for many gases uh, u and h data are tabulated. Okay. So, if you summarize this uh, specific heat uh, based on let us say uh, calculations, just we can take an example of uh, u uh, internal energy, you can directly take a, make a use of a table in order to get the changes in the internal energy or if you have the expression of uh, Cv as a function of temperature, you can also use uh, that or uh, for a short temperature uh, intervals, you can uh, just take the average uh, Cv value and obtain delta u. Okay. So, this depends on what is available and uh, of course, the state conditions. So, with that, I will close uh, this lecture and we have just summarized uh, the energy balance for the closed systems. So, we will take up uh, in the next lecture for the uh, case of open system. So, I will see you in the next lecture.